Human Rise. Good morning or good afternoon, everyone. So uh, we're going to continue this uh, build project here. I'm just waiting for the stream to catch up and go live. Um, but basically, what we're going to be doing today is we are building. Um, well, I've already built a, a couple more um, envelope generators, which are the. Um, well, we'll have a look on the scope in a second what an envelope generator does, but basically it's it's a way to add a bit more character um, to the uh, to the sound that's being produced um, by the synthesizer. And so um, let's take a look at that right now. Um, and so basically, let's see. So this is a, the schematic that we're working off here, but way more interesting to look at what we're doing on the workbench here. So um, a couple of things here. So there is um, actually quick, overview of the layout we've got here. So this red board here is actually uh, divided into one, two, three um, voices, which is basically a combination of an oscillator, amplifier, and filter. So there's so there's a two note voices and then a sub note, so a, um, one or two octaves down note, that they get mixed together uh, in a mixer section here. Um, and then this breadboard here is actually uh, used to just have one envelope generator here that was doing the, the attack, decay, sustain, and release curve for the, um, the amplification of the notes, so giving it that, that sort of note sound when you press a key on the keyboard. Um, but then I've added one, two, three additional um, filters, uh, sorry, envelope generators on here to give more character to the sound. So just to give you an overview of where we're at at the moment, so this is what the, the bass synthesizer currently sounds like. And that's without any of the envelopes actually taking effect here. And where we got to yesterday was I had an envelope generator here that was controlling the, the cutoff on the filter and that, that that's a low pass filter. So if I manually change it, it changes the color of the note like this. But instead of us manually control it, we can have the signal from the envelope generator control it like this. It gives that sort of little hard dunk at the start, uh, and we can change the curve of that on the, um, the generator itself. So, for example, if I choose the right pot here, So that's the fun that an envelope generator adds. It allows you to, it's essentially a, like automatically tweaking the, the, the knobs um, on a synthesizer. Um, but what is what does that actually mean? What is it doing? So let's spin the camera around here to take a look at the, the oscilloscope. Now there is currently four different envelopes that I'm generating here. And I've just noticed I haven't wired one of them up to the, um, to the oscilloscope, so let's let's do that because I'd I'd like us to be able to see all four, um, all four of the envelopes that are being generated because that'll sort of give you a sense of um, visually what they're doing. You know, I'm a very visual person. I like to be able to see things. Um, when I can see it, it makes sense to me. Um, when I can't see it, I, I you know, it's uh, harder to make sense of. So let's get this oscilloscope probe wired in here and clipping on the ground wire and I'll just run a little jumper wire into the, uh, where will we run that? Oh, maybe I did already wire it up. I can see that I've got, hang on. So I've got, that's in the zap generator. Yeah, I just haven't got one off the, uh, off the original uh, envelope, which is the one controlling the amplifier. I was focused on the, the newer ones, but that's, Let's do that as well, because I really want to be able to see all of those together. Uh, now it comes off here. I'm not sure you've already got a, looks like I've already got a test point wired up. So, bear with me a second. Let's carefully move this oscilloscope probe. Should 
can't see what I'm doing because I know the camera is, is staring at that oscilloscope, but that's good because that's where something interesting is about to happen. Um, as we near the com completion of this project, I am getting more and more excited about being able to clean up uh, my table here because it is a mess. And I don't cope well with mess. It's funny that I cope okay with it while we're in the, the phase of building something, but um, it's just getting to the point where I'm like, nope, no, nope, no, nope, I've got to got to clean this. Um, it's just really hard to get onto this test point here because of everything else going on in the circuit. Okay, there we go. I think that's wired in and put the tab ground clip on there. Because I have a nice little post there. Okie dokie. Let's turn on channel four. Um, okay, so that should work. Let's just move channel three up a little bit. So as you can see on the scope here, hopefully you can see on the scope here, we've got the yellow, blue, pink, and uh, dark blue lines there. Yep, you can see them. Um, let's turn off the that light strip in the background because it's a bit, bit bright. There we go. How's that? Oh, that's nice. And then we can see what we're doing. Um, okay. Let's go. All right. Enough, let's go. So I'm gonna hit a key on the keyboard and whoa, you see all those funny lines start to show up on the um, oscilloscope. I'm gonna wind the time series out even further here so we can, uh, let's see, that's a 500 millisecond. So there we go, that's nice. We'll stop that running there. Um, let's move this a little bit so you can see all the envelopes. So uh, interestingly, the pink one didn't trigger at all, but that could be, uh, that's odd, because that's definitely plugged in, but if that's actually the, anyway, deal with that in a second. Um, let's look at what we can see here on the screen. So um, all of these, the, the, the yellow, light blue, and pink uh, envelopes are actually inverted at the moment because they're controlling the filter, and the filter um, a drop in voltage um, closes the filter as opposed to it um, opening it. So you want the signal to be inverted. So you can see there's a very quick attack, so it dives down super quickly, and then a slower um, decay, or actually it's a release. I'm using the envelopes that control the filter section are just a attack and release filters, so they don't have a decay and sustain, sustain portion because you just want that initial whack or tweak to the to the filter, which is different though to the blue line here, which is the actual amplitude filter. So you can see again, super quick to attack because we want that hard hitting base mode. And then a flat top here where it sustains while I've got the key pressed. And then when I let the key, uh, when I let go of the key, with this beautiful exponential decay or, or release line here going back down to the volume being zero. I'm just run that again and I'll press the key a little longer. And there you can see again how it changes, how those envelopes change. And we can adjust the settings a little bit. So where's the light blue ones on this one? So if I wanted a really long release, look at, we'll change things on the light blue. See how that now has a really long, uh, release. So if we were controlling a filter, it would take a long time for that to, to close back down, which is kind of the effect that, that I wanted. Because here we've got the, the main voice there on the synth, and then um, we also have that sub bass coming through. Why it's so quiet today. Let's see, let's just focus on that. That's just that sub oscillator note there. So one octave lower than the, the main sort of voice. And what, what I wanted to do was for it to have a longer um, release on the filter. So it's, it's more like the, the natural sound of a, um, a bass guitar's note sort of ringing out. Um, and the way we're gonna do that is uh, let's move the camera back on to the, let's see if we can get the board and the oscilloscope because it's kind of neat to be able to see both at the moment. There we go. This camera mount is not super sturdy, so uh, if it does fall over, sorry about that. Yeah, uh, it'll kind of work. Um, now, each of these um, 
each of these envelope generators, I then wire the output of the envelope first through an op amp to invert the signal so that it's usable for the, the, the way the filter runs. Because again, the filter wants, uh, if the filter's at zero, it's wide open. And then as you increase the voltage is when the filter closes. So the, the filter gets lower and lower and, and cuts out more of the sound. Um, but for what we want to do, we actually kind of want it to be the opposite, which is when the, when the um, uh, filter sort of decays away, um, that's when it closes the filter back down. So we invert the signal um, so that that way we're affecting the offset that's manually set by the the uh, pot. Um, now I need a longer, I'm gonna have to make a, a jumper lead to run this filter signal across. So I'll just quickly strip a, a wire here. My normal jumpers are a little bit too, too short to run from breadboard to breadboard. Um, I'll do that, just take a quick check on the stream here, make sure it's broadcasting properly. And yeah, looks like we're all live. Awesome. Okay, so back to what we're doing here. Um, and so amazingly enough, I just cut that cable way too short. Let's make another one. Nice long lead. So, so what we're going to do, what I'm going to do is um, the output of one of these envelope generators that we just created, in fact, that light blue line that we were manipulating before to see that longer release, I'm going to run the signal from that, basically the voltage from that, um, into the um, voltage controlling the filter, the voltage controlled filter um, on the... Uh, the sub bass note because I want to see what it sounds like when we if we can impact that filter or, or have that filter being manipulated in a different way independently of, of the main note. So just to hear okay so I've just run that that wire in if you want to take a quick look um, kind of hard with that harsh light behind us let's, let's keep the board and the oscilloscope in check. There we go. So now if I hit a key So again, focus. Wow, there's something really weird happening there. The pitch is changing as well. I've had this happen before. Yeah, there we go. The instability that gets introduced into this system. Um, this, this is such a giant project to be doing on a breadboard that. Um, it's just not particularly practical. I'm just going to remove one of these oscilloscope probes because it's pushing down on one of the wires, which... Okay, that's better. We don't have that silly pitch change happening there. Um, so, so if you look at that blue line, um, the light blue line, the second line, that's what's happening to our filter cutoff on that base note, but the filter's too open at the moment. So we manually set the offset, basically the starting point. Oh yeah, that's more what I was looking for. See how that nicely just sort of decays away as the note brings out. In fact, it might make it a little bit of a longer decay. Now, if we bring up one of the note voices, Yellow, the pink line on the oscilloscope should be showing um, the envelope that is affecting the uh, the note filter. I can't seem to get a signal on that for some reason. But now what I want is that. Um, 
sub bass off. I really want this note to ring. Um, basically, to have an even shorter decay. Let's see if we can do that. See this on the scope. I'm not getting the reading. see this to make sense of it so just give me a sec while I try and work out what's happening with this, uh, this signal here so yeah, it's just not a big deal I can see a little bit there on the Pink line's moving a tiny bit now, but why is so little? Maybe it's the release is too short. There we go. Just gonna get some movement now. There we go. Such a hard hit on the start there, which I think I can dial back a little bit. I really would like it to taper off so you can virtually not hear it. That's, there go, that's pretty close to being closed. We'll get a bit of resonance. We take off that really low end, take the attack down. Um, now let's bring the sub bass back in, which should have a different. Oh, there we go. Second voice for the spatial effect. That mix is coming through a bit loud. Well. Let's just turn that down a little bit. Gives us an extra bit of control, which is the main thing I want to actually hear. I wonder if I was not. That's a bit better. I can sort of just dial back a little bit of the amount of control voltage manipulation or modulation we're sending through. That's nice. That, that's sort of the more worse. Okay, so that's one of, so we've now got um, one envelope generator here doing the um, amplitude uh, envelope, then we've got one controlling the filter cutoff of the, the main note voice. 
uh, or node voices, I should say, the two of them that are a pair. We've now got a, a third envelope generator controlling the filter cutoff from that sub-base node to give it that longer ring out. Um, the last thing I wanted to try just for a bit of fun was we've got a fourth envelope generator here, which is actually the yellow line. You see, that's, that's definitely working. Um, I want to see what happens if we plug that into the, um, the resonance of the, the main voice. Um, and then depending what that does, I'm not sure if it'll sound good or not. Um, we might also try having it manipulate the pulse width modulation of the, the square wave. Um, cause that's another way to give a fair bit of character in the sound. Um, now I gotta remember, I'm trying to remember how the resonance control actually works because it's, um, I can't remember if it likes a negative voltage or a positive voltage. So let's, let's just check that before we get too far into this. Um, get multimeter here. Let's swivel the camera around so you can see what I'm doing. And let's just put that, go. Let's put that blind down behind us so that we're not dealing with that super harsh, super harsh Sydney Sunday morning light. It's still there a little bit, isn't it? All right. Um, so what we want to do is just get the multimeter um, plugged in here and so we can watch what the voltage is on the uh, the existing pot that's controlling the, the resonance. Because I, I just can't remember off the top of my head whether these uh, the resonance control for this is positive or, or diving into a negative voltage. We'll be able to see really quick on this. I'm just running this test wire in there. Oh, and hey, look at that. I've got a new watch. It's not all smashed up. Um, okay, multimeter's plugged in. Yeah, I got wire stuck to me. And I don't think you're gonna be able to see the multimeter, but that's okay. Um, so it's registering a voltage of zero right now, which is interesting, because yep, yeah, that might be right, because there's no resonance on that voice. If I turn that pot up, uh, we're going to positive voltage. Okay, interesting. Which means I probably don't need the um, inversion via the uh, the inversion via the op amp that I've implemented for controlling the filter. Um, so that just what that means is that just changes the way in which we'll where we'll tap into the filter um, cutoff. Now. I'm, Got to create another long um, jumper lead here. So this is the the envelope that we're going to tap into. This one up here, um, and as I said, it's currently wired in. So the output here on pin two of the AS thirty three ten is going into this uh, op amp that's inverting the signal uh, for me for being used to filter. But I don't want that, and I also can't just tap directly into that because that op amp is creating a virtual ground, which means there'll appear to be zero voltage at that point, which would have me scratching my head all morning as to why there isn't a filter signal. Um, now, how should we do this? What, what we should do here is run a, uh, the signal into basically the same. So all the common practice here is that you have the pot that's controlling the, you know, for manual control, for, for setting up a manual control voltage, you have a pot or a potentiometer um, that's acting as a voltage divider across the minimum and maximum range of the, the control voltage you want. So in this case, it's like zero to five volts, I think. Um, and there's a, a, pot, a potentiometer that sits between plus five volts and ground. And then the wiper on the pot, the thing that actually moves when you, when you turn the dial, um, that's connected to a 100K resistor, which converts that voltage into, basically it leaves it as a, as a current that can then go into the, um, the uh, input of the chip where it's expecting its uh, resonance input because it's a, it's a current, my understanding of this device is it's a current sensing device um, for its resonance control. So what we'll do is I can see the wire here that goes into the chip and where we're getting the 100K resistor um, that's feeding in the pot. So I'm just adding in another 100K resistor to a spare run on the breadboard and then that's how we'll feed in our signal from the envelope generator. So it's, it's just kind of like a, a second control voltage coming in. So I can still manipulate it manually through the pot if I want, which let's take a listen to that. So um, let's just 
Let's make sure that's not. Hang on. What am I doing? I don't want to go. What? Sorry. I'm confused myself. Everything I just everything I just said I do want to do, but we don't want to manipulate the resonance on the sub oscillator because that um, the quirk of these 3320 filters is they lose a whole lot of bass uh, when you have um, when you have resonance turned on. Now I'm in a bit of a pickle here because I don't have a spare row on the breadboard through which I could run that 100k resistor for the resonance. So we'll actually do it up here on the output of the filter, which is not ideal, but um, it'll have the, not not ideal from like an organizational perspective because these are the things I do and then scratch my head and wonder, huh, where is that 100k resistor? And then end up putting two in and then it really doesn't work. So I'm just putting the 100k resistor straight off the output of the envelope generator. So that's basically our current signal now and hopefully this wire is not too long for it and we'll run it straight into the same point as to where the pot value is going and into the chip. Okay, so so again, same sort of thing. What we've done is we've created a um, a second voltage control input into the resonance. Like if this was a Eurorack system with a, a jack that was allowing you to put a control voltage in for controlling the resonance on the filter, all we've basically done is now set up two jacks where we can feed in two control voltage signals um, and they'll, they'll sort of play off one, one another for, for lack of a better term. Um, and the probe on this, uh, oh, that's interesting. Right, so slight modification here because we what we what I do still want to be able to do is get, um, I do still want to be dial, able to dial in and dial out or dial up and dial down the amount of envelope control voltage that's actually affecting this. So I don't actually want to go direct off the chip because what we should do is go envelope signal out of the chip, which is pin two, down into a uh, another potentiometer or pot that um, is essentially, again, a voltage divider that's de determining just how much of that signal we're sending. Um, so that previously used to be fed by the op amp. We're not using the op amp anymore. We're sending it straight out of there. Okie dokie. Now, first of all, let's just confirm we do have things working the way we'd expect. So let me just wire carefully over there. Um, we're going to use the yellow, the signal that's in yellow there on the oscilloscope is going to be our, our envelope. And notice how now it's not inverted. It's, it's spiking upwards because the, the, oh, no, you can't see anything because you're not looking at the oscilloscope. All right. So our yellow line is the envelope that we're going to use to control the resonance on the filter. And notice when I press a key, it bounces up. So it's it's a positive voltage being created and then decaying, sweeping off. Um, and I still have the, the pot wired up so we can control just how much that signal goes through. Notice as I turn it down, that spike gets less and less and less. Or as I turn it up, it gets bigger and bigger on the scope. And that's not actually affecting the sound at all at the moment. So you wouldn't have been hearing any difference. We're just looking at the difference on the scope. But now, if I plug this, which is, if I plug this wire in, which is running to the um, filter, the, the resonance control on the filter into the output of that pot, just like what we were seeing on the screen via that 100K resistor, now we should start to hear a difference in resonance. Turn it up. Now, hang on. Are we listening to the right voice? We don't want the sub necessarily. There we go. We just want our two note voices. There they are. And let's turn up the pot that's controlling how much of that envelope signal. It's had a little bit of an effect, but I think if we adjust the the attack maybe first. Well, that's quite nice and squelchy. And then if we make the release longer. Yeah, 
Self-oscillating quite a lot at that level of voltage. Let's dial it back down. That's kind of neat. If we bring in the sub voice underneath it to get a bit more body. sub bass kind of swell in a little bit so um, just turn down the note voices it's just our big boomy bass underneath um, and what I kind of want to do is oh, can I do this I want about to swell in but I don't think I can because the attack just a is there an attack and release mode and the trigger is a very very short trigger see if I had this this in ADSR mode I probably could I could use a yeah I think that's really what I want here for this force is So the thing, the, the reason I'm struggling a little bit here with this is that the the amp, um, the amp envelope has uh, both a gate and a trigger signal, which means you get a ping, which is the trigger when the uh, the note the key is pressed. So a very quick sharp jump in voltage, uh, which basically kicks off the that filter process, um, and it also has a gate which tells you how long the note's being held for. Um, so a trigger and a gate, which allows it to generate the full attack up to the um, you know peak voltage and then decays down to the sustain point and holds at the sustain point while the gate's open. And then uh, we'll start the release curve once the gate has been closed. But when you're running these as only um, with just a tired gate and trigger, so you're just getting the trigger pulse and not that gate being held open, then what you end up with is just the attack and release, which uh, again, if you look at the the yellow line there is exactly that. Um, it's a, um, it doesn't stay up no matter how long you hold the note for. Um, really, if we were seeing the actual amp envelope, you'd, you'd be able to see that, but we don't, we don't have that one currently on the scope, just because it was really awkward to get that test point in. Maybe, hang on, could I run that in? I think I can see a way I can run that probe in without causing too much trouble here. Again, it really helps to be able to see what we're, what we're talking about. Um, yep, 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 this will work. Bear with me a sec. Just rearranging the mess of cables here that is the oscilloscopes test points uh, or probes um, and one more loop. Lift that under there. Da, da, da. Snake it around here. And there we go. We should be able to get a nice clean pop under there. Yep. And let's see. There's the ground. There's the ground. Let's see. Yep. Beautiful. Okay. So now when you see that dark blue line there, it's an actual attack decay. Um, sustain release because when I hold the note the dark blue line there stays up until I hold it down as opposed to the other filters that just begin decaying immediately and I think ultimately that might be what I want 
guess it's not. I guess what I'm thinking of there is probably I want. It's almost like a side chain sort of ducking effect that I think I'm looking for. Um, hmm. See if we if I just adjust the, the attack on the amp envelope, you get a sense of what what I'm looking for. I'm looking for that swell sort of sound. So instead of shooting up to the top of the voltage there, see how it now comes up gradually. How does that sound? Oh, well, the other voices all go through that same amp envelope. No, I don't think I do want that. I think it's got to have that hard sort of attack. All right, we'll scrap that idea. Let's get back to where we were. So that's the sub bass. Turn up our note voices. I think that'll do it for this stream. So that's wired up those four envelope generators. So we've got, I'm gonna swivel the camera around here and it must be right on time to finish the stream because Xavier's here and he looks like he's hungry. Um, so we've got uh, the main amplitude envelope generator, which is the overall volume and profile of the sound. One envelope generator that's controlling the filter cutoff of the main voices. Um, one envelope generator that's controlling the filter cutoff of the bass voice, which is that one, and then a resonance, which was really interesting. And just to confirm, they're each doing something to the sound. I'm going to turn the um, amount pot down on each of those envelopes, except the amplitude, obviously, because if we turn that down, we'd hear nothing. And the raw sound is now... And if we start turning up... Let's just turn up the filter controls. So this is the filter cutoff on the main voices. Give us that initial sort of dynamic to the sound. And then the same but for the sub bass. That's it for the envelope generators. I think I'm happy with those being the, the main sort of manipulations there of, of what you can control with an envelope. And um, the last piece of this before I'm sort of done with, with this project and then design a, um, transform this PCB and uh, this uh, breadboard mess into a PCB that I can get fabricated is this exciting addition, which is a uh, breakout board which contains a spin semiconductors SV, FV1 uh, effects DSP. Um, really cool little chip that has an assembly-based language you can use to program uh, all sorts of audio effects, be it reverbs, delays, distortions, chorus, anything really. Um, but it's neat. 
it's it's uh, easily accessible and programmable. Uh, there's even graphical tools you can use to program it, which is, is uh, something I'm looking forward to trying out. Um, it's got eight effects on board that we'll be able to try it. You can load your own into an EEPROM uh, on here, but I don't have an EEPROM or a programmer yet. I've got to order one of those. So we'll just be stuck with these stock effects for now, um, but I'm hoping this gives way more of a, or a much better reverb that, that I'm happy with. So that's it for now. Thank you for tuning in this morning. And uh, that's what envelope generators are there for. And they've, they've added a whole lot of character to the sound, which I'm, uh, I'm really happy with. So thanks again for tuning in. And uh, I'll see you all again sometime really soon, maybe even as early as this afternoon. All right. Bye-bye for now.